So there's a new tablet out using a new screen technology. It's called the DC One. I'm sure you heard of it. Um, it's bubbling up on YouTube and elsewhere online. Um, there's not a lot of information about it, so I wanted to do some digging to to bring some information to the to the forefront about this particular product because there's literally almost none on the website, which we'll go through here in a second. But I wanted to like dig into the technology and explain a couple things that were are kind of ambiguous about what's going on with it and what the hubbub is all about and why they're comparing it to e-ink. So I did a little research, got me some information, stuffed it in a bag, tied that bag to a stick, and I'm marching it back to the studio. Welcome back to the channel, Roger here, Rants About Tech. And today, like I said, we're gonna talk about the DC-1. Just mention a couple things about it clear some things up hopefully basically we're just going to go through the website here and i'm just going to hit on some things as we come across them all right so we got the site up here and we're just going to go through the site and just kind of go over these things as we as we come to them so the first thing we see here is the computer de-evented what <laughs> what meet dc1 a new kind of computer designed for deep focus and well-being that's a weird way to phrase that but okay all right so Wow, this is a different site. This isn't the site that I'm used to here. So it seems as though they've changed the site a little bit, So, but we're still gonna just go through it as normal here. So first thing we got, like I said, is the computer de-evented, meet the DC1, a new kind of computer designed for defocus and well-being. Let's address that real quick. I just wanna say, people make a big deal out of products that are distraction-free, that don't have notifications. Um, I'm like, I mean, we, we can do this with any device. You can just turn those notifications off problem solved I mean it's good the devices do it for you and they don't even give you a way to tempt you to turn the notifications on I guess like the the remarkable here but I mean just turn the notifications off all right so anyway um so it's it's I don't know if that's a feature I guess that's why I'm bringing that up they, people mention that as a feature I'm not sure if it's a feature if everything you own can do it um introducing daylight more fr human friendly computer Computers aren't human or friendly. <laughs> uh, the world's first full speed paper light display. Okay, let's address this. So um, they're touting 60, 60 frames per, sec per second, smooth interactions, a calm experience uh, for your health. Um, so scroll, zoom, turn pages, even watch video without any lag. So that is a insight into this technology right here. It being 60 frames a second. Like what else do we refer to in those terms? LCD screens, OLED. Uh, we won't get to the other LEDs, but <laughs> the point being that we've we talk in these terms already. That to me was a sign of what was to come when I did more digging into this. It's we're talking about it in familiar terms, and uh, we know what technology we talk about in those terms. So, um, a distraction free space for learning and creativity, reading, note taking. So, okay, so reading, so right off the bat, you can look at the screen right now and tell that the contrast between the, the lettering and the actual uh, brightness of the screen is not as high as e-ink. Uh, what I would say about this is that um, you can tell that the contrast is not the same as e-ink. I mean, maybe if we're talking about Kaleido 3 um, level contrast, but this isn't color, so the trade-off isn't there. <laughs> um, uh, what else we got here? We got um, live paper display, right? So let's address this live paper display because that's what the crux of this whole situation is. This is this is where all the confusion comes in. If not for, for them labeling this live paper display and e-ink like that, this wouldn't be such a big deal, I don't think. Uh, we invented a new type of display that's like e-ink, but faster. It looks and feels like paper, but runs at 60 frames a second, so you can walk fluidly or work so you can work fluidly and use all your apps without compromise. All right, so let's address that statement right there. So um, it says it's like e-ink. Well, I can tell you right now that this this, this display technology is it's just LCD. That's what we're dealing with here. And when like, like I said, when we saw that 60 frames per second, that was a telltale sign. Um, so we're dealing with familiar technology here. And, and from my digging, it looks like this technology was brought about in 20... In, the two, in 2000, so, uh, and, and it's called trans-reflective technology. So let's do a quick search for here. So from what I can tell, the only thing I've been able to find about this technology as far as when it was developed is the earliest paper I can see, which is off of ResearchGate, is October 2005. So I'm 
thinking this technology was developed around the early 2000s, which is in line with what I've heard from other sources. But for some reason, I can't find anything online about the actual date this technology was discovered or by whom. So, yeah. So basically, um, this is transreflective technology. Um, let me explain reflective technology first, because then that kind of builds on that. Reflective LCDs are transparent LCD layers that have a mirror underneath. When the light, ambient light comes in and hits the LCD, it passes through, hits the mirror, and reflects that light back. Bam, you see the pixels on the screen. Now, transreflective LCDs do the same thing that does, but they add the complexity of a backlight into the situation. Now, where exactly this backlight is in the, the hierarchy of displays or hierarchy of layers, um, I'm not sure whether that backlight is below the mirror layer, which would be difficult to shine light below a mirrored layer, or if it's above the mirrored layer, which probably would make more sense, but I just really don't know that much about the technology. Nothing really new here. And like I said, it's been around since the early 2000s, but that is the live paper display, essentially. It's just trans-reflective LCD, and um, it hasn't been used in a lot of stuff. It hasn't been a real big commercial success since its development, but I guess here we have someone that's been developing it for the last six years and is bringing it to market um, now. And that is the reason why it can do 60 frames per second, because it's essentially just LCD technology. Um, and he's also touting that it can do up to 120, though it can't do that yet, I hear. It's just locked at 60 for now. All right, what else we got with all your apps you need? So um, this particular thing has a, a uh, OS. What is the OS called? It's called Soul OS. And Soul OS is just basically an operating system that's based on Android. So like any other Android tablet, you have access to the Play Store. You can download apps. So what I'm not sure about is if you can use all of your apps or not. So, But it looks like here it says use all of your favorite apps. So I'm assuming you have the run of the whole uh, Android app store. So so yeah, this that's cool. That's very cool. Um, it's a computer that can you can use outside. So yeah, it's a computer that you can use outside. And there, so they have changed the site because yesterday I was on the site and they were comparing this outside to a iPad. And I gotta tell you, that comparison was ridiculous. Um, they had the iPad and the DC one sitting side by side in the daylight, except the iPad didn't have any sunlight shining on the screen and the daylight one did. And there was a difference in the contrast, but not even though they were handicapping the iPad, essentially, there still wasn't that big of a difference in the contrast. Uh, certainly nothing on par with uh, e-ink. I'll tell you that right now. This technology is interesting in that, in that it, it's LCD technology without a backlight and without color, which takes out the blue light. They made a big deal out of not having blue light. So there's zero blue light in this product as well which I'm sure is going to be good for a lot of people who are concerned about, about that. Again, something that you can do with most products these days. Um, so I'm not sure how big of a feature that is. A lot of these things that they're calling features in this product, other products can do. It's marketing. They got a good marketing team for sure. All right, what else we got here? Extended battery. And yeah, it, it should have extended battery because you're not using... A backlight all the time. You don't wouldn't have to use a backlight all the time. You can use ambient light, but the contrast. I don't just. I just don't think the contrast is there yet. It's not not on LCD level. You'd be making a lot of compromises. You make compromises with e-ink, but you'd be having to make even more compromises with this device right here, in my opinion. So the amber glow. They they tout this as a feature too. The amber light. I don't think that the amber light is is a feature. Again, other devices can do this. So is it a feature? I don't know. I guess they're just showing that, hey, we can do it too. This site takes off, or this particular iteration of the site takes out a lot of information. A lot of the information that they had on this site is not here now. <laughs> oh no, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here's that site. All right, there we go. Wow, I, that was weird. <laughs> um, this is the, this is this, all right, so this is the picture I was talking about showing the two, the, the tablet side by side. You see how there's no sunlight showing on the iPad, but there's tons of sunlight showing on this DC one here. Uh, this does have a paper-like finish, like what we find on a lot of tablets that are designed to be to be written on uh, and to be note takers, a paper replacement essentially. Um, and like I said, they, they're just calling this paper because it just doesn't have illuminated, illuminated pixels. 
And we're still dealing with the LCD technology here. All right, so here we go, introducing SolOS. So like I said, SolOS is just a Android operating system. It's just rescanned Android, essentially. All right, here we go, we got some stats here. So uh, the display is a 10.5 inch live paper display, uh, 1600 by 1200, which puts it at 190 uh, DPI, which is very interesting. Uh, that's a term for resolution used mainly for things with technology like e-ink and newspaper um, because of the the dot nature of the pics or the pigment that's in e-ink uh, kind of correlates to the, to the dot matrix of newspaper and so they kind of use the same term LCD though usually uses PPI as a term to refer to the, re the resolution so it's interesting that they use DPI a term that e-ink should use but doesn't always use e-ink typically uses PPI when it should be DPI it's very interesting. So they're definitely trying to correlate this to e-ink, even in the nomenclature there. So very interesting, very clever. Uh, pure amber backlight, optional DC dimming, Wacom. So this is, has Wacom technology in it. So you should be able to use all of your old styluses if you have e-ink styluses already, because they, they all use the same technology. If you decide to pick one of these up, which We'll get to that. Uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, very good. 128 gigabytes storage. Um, MediaTek Helio G99. I did some research on this and I couldn't find anything relevant. So what phones use this? Uh, it's a gaming smartphone processor that was announced in 2022. So it's, it's uh, a couple years old now. <clears throat> um, what phones use it? Okay, so here's a list of the phones that use it here. And the only one I even uh, recognize is the Poco 6M Pro by name. Never seen it, though. Everything else doesn't even ring a bell to me. So not a mainstream processor and a couple years old. And it's a gaming processor, so it's meant to push around some pixels, which would explain all the zooming that's going on in the marketing material. Um, uh, so all right, a lightweight CPU. Not, nothing too crazy, but you know, all right, get, I guess it'll get the job done. Um, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, USB-C. It does have a micro SD slot. Awesome. So it's expandable storage. It doesn't mention how much storage is expandable up to, though. Um, weight, 550 grams. Wow. Okay, so by comparison right here, we have the Remarkable 2 at 403 grams I think 402 or 403 grams uh, this is over a hundred grams heavier than the remarkable here and uh, the remarkable I mean it's light but yeah the <laughs> I actually think yeah definitely the note air 3c is definitely heavier um, uh, what else we got here pogo pins so I guess it's going to be expandable with some kind of um, accessory and here we go at the end we got Android 13 so yeah all right, and lastly, let's look at the price here. Uh, so they got the order button, whoa, $729, would you look at that? Okay, so um, so now we know that it's not beaten e-ink or LCD in the price department either because both of those technologies come in at a way lower price than that. I get it, it's a new product, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive in the beginning. That's just what it is, I get it. Um, but man, I think you kind of have to take a hit in the beginning just to get your product out there so people can see how good it is. Again, I'm not sure this is going to be good at all. So that, that, may be, <laughs> that may be why that price is there. Like, oh, let's get our money and get out of here. But no, uh, yeah, that's a steep, that's an uphill battle they're going to have with that price. And like I said, not having a real standout feature other than touting the fact that you're saying your display is paper-like and the only reason they're saying it's paper-like is because it uses ambient light. Oh, this is going to be an uphill battle. Let's, what do we know? All right. So this is how I see this shaking out. All right. I see this as LCD being right here. All right. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have um, e-ink, right? And somewhere in the middle is where this technology lies. Not as good as LCD. Not as good as e-ink. Just it's, you make, you're making compromises on both ends of the spectrum here. And, but that doesn't even explain it, though. I, in my opinion, it not only is in the middle of those two, two technologies, it's a rung below that technology. 
two rungs below <laughs> that technology. So in the middle, but lower. I don't know, man. I, I've been like covering, I haven't had a YouTube channel for very long, but I've been covering and been a part and been support in technology for a very long time. And typically when a company comes out with new technology and they're super vague about it, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. Uh, Editor Rod, put a red flag in my hand. Matter of fact, white flag. It's a foul, okay? <laughs> Throw the flag in. This It's never a good situation. You, you have to question these things when you don't get proper information about technology when people are coming out with it and talking about it. It's just a bunch of marketing, in my opinion, right here. Not, a good, not as good as the ink, a lot of compromises being made. So let's just run through it, right? Um, ink is better than it as far as the contrast goes. It, it, we saw here the contrast really can't touch e-ink. It can't even barely deal in with the iPad. It's got to do trickery to deal with the iPad. So definitely not dealing with e-ink in the contrast. Um, it's not dealing with e-ink in the daylight comparisons. Um, I doubt it's still gonna gonna be better than e-ink in the battery consumption department because e-ink is it's a physical medium. It's bi-stable, you know, which means it can hold an image using no power at all. Uh, LCD technology can't match that. Um, it's going to need power to show you the pixels on screen, regardless if you're viewing it with ambient light or not, um, which means when you turn it off, the screen goes off. Um, not so with uh, e-ink. And I think that is going to, you know, be a difference in the battery consumption. So I don't think it's going to be better in the battery consumption department. And um, just clarity. It's still LCD, right? So to me, the clarity on for the e-ink and that that physical component, like it just doesn't have that. You can't really tout e-ink like when the only similarities between this transreflective technology and e-ink technology is the fact that you can use ambient light to view it. That's where the similarities end, full stop. Um, and as far as LCD technology goes, you know, this thing doesn't have color. It can't match LCD in that department. It can't match LCD in the clarity department because of the brightness. Um, there's a lot of drawbacks you're making on both ends of the spectrum to, to come to this product. Um, and it's slotting below, okay? It's slotting below, but you're making compromises. And I, I just don't see a technology that's not better than anything in any one particular thing. Like you don't have to be overall better, but be better at something. And this technology isn't better at anything. Um, it's offering you an option in the LCD realm, but it's it's not, I don't think it's competing with e-ink. It's hard to even say it's competing with LCD, even though it's an LCD technology or typical traditional LCD with color and the brightness and all of that. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's going to be a tough sell. It's going to be a tough sell. So that's my take on the DC one here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my little breakdown. Um, I hope you got something out of it. And I hope that this, you know, brings some clarity to the situation. Um, that is the DC one marketing, um, barrage. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, that's going to be it for me. Like, if you like, subscribe, if you want to see more and, uh, till next time, take care.